All right. In the back row, um, fourth row on the left side, fourth C. Jeff Ira Winderman from the South Florida Sun Sentinel. Um, with you and Udonis Haslam in this series, can you sort of give us some thoughts on what it takes to maintain longevity in this league and what's it like to sort of have that kind of ride in this league? Man, um, what it takes, dedication, passion, um, sacrifice. Um, you got to do the right things to be in this position, obviously. You got to be for the team. So uh, I think all those qualities UD has, he's shown me those qualities. That's how I'm in a position today. Uh, he's been a good mentor, friend of mine for a while. So, um, you know, watching him from afar, seeing how he's went about his business. Um, and also, you know, I live in my, Miami, so um, I've, you know, seen his work from afar. So, you know, studying that allowed me to get in this position. So, um, you know, I just took, took it and put it to my use. And now I'm in the position I'm in today, so I just try to, you know, relay that message to the young guys on, you know, how to be in this league for a long time. Staying on the left side, fourth row, Tanya. Tanya Ganguly. Yeah, there's a lot of bugs in here. Yeah. New York Times. Um, Aaron was talking a little bit about the time you guys spent together several years ago in Orlando. Mm -hmm. um, he's taken a very different role here than he had back then. I'm wondering what you've seen in terms of how his mentality has changed and what's allowed him to be open to that? <coughs> uh, I've seen a lot of growth in there. Um, maturity, obviously, when I was in, when we were in Orlando together, you know, he was young, you know, still trying to find his footing in this league. But now I see, like I said, a much mature Aaron who's simplifying his game, not trying to do too much, but be effective in his uh, pursuit of the game, letting the game come to him. Uh, his defense has been tremendous. I think his focus is now starting there and he, he's allowing that to, you know, carry over to the offensive end. Um, but Aaron is, you know, he's a workaholic. He's somebody who's worked on this game a lot in order to be at this point. And he's a big X factor, you know, for us and what he brings to this team. Um, so I've seen a lot of growth in, you know, in him and, you know, wanting to be in this position. You know, for me, I think he's a, one of the best two-way players in this league. Uh, I, think, I don't think he get enough credit for that. But he's, he's worked on it all. So I think, you know, he deserves to be where he's at now. Left side, second row. Tyler King, Denver Gazette. Jeff, you <clears throat> had some matchups with Kyle Lowry back in your days in college, going to Georgetown Villanova. I won those, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Just curious if you remember anything else about those matchups and what it's been like to play against Kyle throughout your respective NBA careers. Yeah, I love Kyle to death, man. He's, he's been a good friend of mine. He's somebody who's a true competitor, um, like you said, since college. And like I said, I've won a lot of those games. Uh, but, you know, he, he brings the best out of you. He's going to go out there and compete to the high level, uh, for high level. So, you know, I, I've been loving this game ever since, you know, college and since he got in the league and how he plays and his approach in the game. But, you know, I think I have a good record against him, so I got to keep that going. Fifth row on the left side. Mick Miller, Fox 31. Jeff, obviously the mentality is four more wins, but on a big stage like this, knowing your basketball journey and everything that you had to overcome, do you allow yourself to have moments where you reflect on your journey and be proud of everything that you've been able to accomplish? Of course, of course. Um, I think Mon Monday was game seven for them. So that's when it truly hit me, you know, that we are in the finals. And you have to be appreciative of, you know, these kind of things. They don't come too often. And especially given, you know, my career, how, how my career has maneuvered through the years, I don't take these moments for granted. Um, you know, I try to be in the present time. Obviously, we all say four wins. But, you know, for me, it's, I take it game by game uh, until that goal of four wins is dealt with. But I do appreciate, you know, these moments, you know, talking to you guys, you know, looking out on the floor, seeing all the media, knowing what we're playing for and what it took to get here. And you just reflect on that, man. It's, you know, it's a blessing to be in this position, thankful. Um, and, you know, I just try to take it all in and appreciate it. Second row on the right side. Dan Devine, Yahoo Sports. Jeff, you know, we were talking earlier about, you know, your role with uh, Aaron, the relationship you've got there. You are, as we said, one of the few Nuggets that's got finals experience, haven't been on the stage before. You talked about appreciating that. I'm wondering if there's anything that you're giving to the other guys, the young guys, you know, from your experience, something that you were able to that pass down to them, say, like, this is what it felt. You know, you mentioned the other day, stuck in the moment of, like, yeah. that feeling. How you kind of maybe try to help them get past that initial stuck and into, get back into business as usual. Well, that was my message. That's, 
I mean, I, I don't talk too often, but, you know, I, that was the message I gave uh, when we won in L.A. You know, I, my message to the team was, you know, appreciate this moment. We worked hard for this moment all season long. Uh, we made Denver Nuggets history with, obviously, the first sweep, getting to the conference finals, then getting to the finals. But embrace this moment, but understand there is still more to it than what we got to do. And I told them my experience as far as, you know, being stuck in that moment, that game seven, um, you know, knowing that I'm getting to the finals. I was stuck there. I, was, I didn't allow myself to get past it um, because I was just, you know, taken back. You know, you don't see all this media too often. So, um, you know, I was, I was just a, a guy who was like a deer caught in the headlights. I was just, you know, stuck in that moment. So my, that was my message to the team was to embrace it, love, love it tonight, but understand once we get our rest and we start practice, what's the, what's the bigger goal? On the left side in the back. Jenna Garcia, Clutch Points. Jeff, I know you were instrumental in the collaboration with Toby Wigwe on the song that you guys came out with for the conference finals. I'd just like to know, like, how did that collaboration come about? And what does that re song represent for this team? Well, I love his music, first and foremost. Toby's a great artist. Um, his, his, uh, you know, his approach to the rap game is, is amazing. His, his pitch, everything. Um, you know, but I think that song in particular, he just has some words in there that fit, you know, our team. And I think it was uh, something that uh, would be useful uh, with the wording in the comparison to our team. And it was something that me and DJ, uh, you know, found, you know, him being from Houston, DJ, uh, Toby being from Houston. So um, I think it was something that, you know, the team just collectively was like, you know, if you like it, we like it. And then we're going to roll with it. And it's worked uh, for our home crowd. So, um, you know, that's something we're going to stick with. And, you know, we're going to – I'm going to continue to support Toby. Hopefully he can come out to a game. That'd be dope. But, you know, he's a great artist. First row on the right. Jake Shapiro, Denver Sports. Jeff, do you think at all about uh, the opposing coach and their strategy and your matchups with that coaching staff in the past and some of the stuff and strategies they've laid out? Uh, say that again? Do you think about the opposing, like, coaching staff and benches at all and what that uh, coach might do to you guys and, like, the strategy? Uh, not too much. I think it's more of a um, thing that you just adapt as you play. Um, you can't really worry about what they're going to do. Um, you can't um, really try to pinpoint on the things that the coach is going to change. Uh, you can't predetermine anything. So for us, I think we have to continue our our approach. Has has it been since you know we started these playoffs? You know, be aggressive on both ends, try to get out and you know play our game. Um, so I think there's something just we're going to adapt to as the game goes on. Two more questions in the front. The Denver Post, Jeff, you've mentioned not, it not really hitting you until game seven and that was finished. What was it like having so much time to watch the Eastern series unfold, especially, you know, look like Miami might finish it early and then having Boston come back? Like, was it hard not to start planning for Miami when they're up 3-0? What, what was that stretch like for you guys as a team? I didn't start planning for it. I think, you know, for me being a vet, I understood – you know, we're they're in the conference finals. Teams are going to battle. Um, Boston battle. They got back in the series. Um, you know, I told my wife um, when they won, Boston won uh, game six, it almost felt like we've been sitting so long, it almost felt like we wasn't in the playoffs anymore because the only thing we was doing was just watching them, you know. But, you know, I watched two good teams battle. And, you know, when they won, it was all right. Now I refocus. But the time off, I think it helped in many ways. It allows us to regroup, uh, touch up on some things, uh, to better ourselves. Um, but you know, it was a, I enjoyed that series a lot, and uh, they showed me some things on both ends. So um, I'm looking forward to this matchup. But you know, no, to your question, I didn't try to you know study just for Miami before uh, when they went up 3-0 uh, because I knew the team they was facing and in the position they was in. Last question, to Gary Washburn in the back. Jeff, you had some tough times in Boston and, and you missed a year and you had the surgery. How have you changed as a, as a player and as a man since those times? I mean, what's that decade been like? Do you reflect on? I'm say sorry. Decade. You just say long time. Yeah. Uh, do you reflect on those times? And what was that like? Uh, obviously, a very dark time in, in your career. Yeah. Uh, so you're asking, well, how was that time? How have I changed since then? Well, I don't think I've really changed. I still, I think now the appreciation for the game, 
uh, the grind, the practices, everything that comes along with this NBA life, basketball, out off the court. I just appreciate it a lot more, man. Like, I, I don't take it for granted, obviously, what I went through. And, you know, when you're young, you think you're invincible until something happens and it halts your career or ends your career. Uh, so I was blessed enough to, you know, go through those dark times that you speak of and grow from it. And now my appreciation for the game, life, my everyday, you know, interactions with people are a lot different. Uh, you see me walk through these halls. Everybody who works for this arena, I say hello to because I don't take them for granted. My teammates, I don't take for granted. My coaches, uh, our chef, I don't take anybody who helps me prepare for my job for granted, this life for granted. So I think that's it's been a consistent thing for me uh, since I went through those times. And it's something that helped me grow as a man, a person on and off the court. So I don't take them, I don't, I don't wish those moments on anybody, but I don't, I wouldn't trade it for the world because it helped me, you know, grow in a lot of, a lot of places. Thank you very much. Yep.